Hello, we're into lesson three. Uh, the first way we're going to start today is with the bow doctor game. So I'm going to make a bow hold and you've got to watch it and see if there's anything that I'm doing wrong here. So here's the bow hold. Can you see anything that you don't like? I hope you saw that it was this first finger that instead of pointing should be curled round the bow like that with it sitting in the middle of this joint and half on that black lapping nibbling into the silver like that. Right, I'm going to do another one. Are you watching? Here we go. Can you spot what's not right? I think this pinky needs to be curled and sitting on top of the stick. One more. Can you see what's wrong here? Straight thumb. Let's bend this thumb. So we've got that bendy thumb with the corner of the thumb sitting half on the metal, half on the hair. And then when we look at the back, we've got this curled fingers with a curly pinky. And the back of my hand is flat like a lake. It's not sticking up like this, like a mountain range. Nice and relaxed like that. And I'm holding the bow so that the tip is pointing straight up at the ceiling. With this bow in this position, we're now just gonna play this little movement game. So stick your hand out like this, and imagine that you're looking in a mirror. Can you follow my bow in the direction that it goes? So if my bow goes over here, you've got to go over there. If my bow goes over here, you've got to follow it. So we go round and round. Now let it come in and out and back. And now I'm going to stir a huge cauldron like that. Now it's a moustache, now it's a telephone, now it's sitting on my shoulder, and now it's in front of me again. Can it go up like a rocket and down like the rain, then back and forth like a choo-choo train, then round and round like a great big sun, sit it on your hand, curly pinky, bendy thumb. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through the different bowing rhythms and I'm just going to let my elbow hang in this balance like a cloud in the sky almost underneath my hand and my elbow I'm going to imagine it's like I'm bouncing on a trampoline. The first bounce is going to go down the way and I'm going to say Piccadilly Circus, Piccadilly Circus. You try it. Ready? Go. Piccadilly Circus. Try it again. Ready, go. Piccadilly Circus. Let's try the next rhythm that we're going to use is Strawberry Raspberry. And this is going to go long, short, short, long, short, short. So Strawberry Raspberry, Strawberry Raspberry. The point of my bow is still sticking straight up to the ceiling. Try it again. Ready, go. Strawberry raspberry. Can you do that two times in a row with me? Ready, go. Strawberry raspberry, strawberry raspberry. Let's try the next rhythm, which is elephant, elephant. Ready, go. Elephant, elephant. We try it again. This time, can you do it four times in a row with me? Ready, go. Elephant, 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 elephant. I think I'm about to drill a hole in my ceiling. Right, the last one with this bouncy elbow with little bounces into the trampoline and it's fatter than a caterpillar. You try it. Ready, go. Fatter than a caterpillar. Now, if you roll a dice and see which number comes up, 
I've rolled my imaginary dice and it's come up with a three. That means that we've got to do it three times. Ready? Go. Fatter than a caterpillar. Fatter than a caterpillar. Fatter than a caterpillar. That was excellent. Now, let's get applying this to the violin. So, we're going to use the CD and we're going to deal with just Piccadilly Circus. So I have my bow with that beautiful bow hold and the flat back of the hand and mum or dad has placed my violin into playing position so that the scroll is over my left foot. I'm holding the violin up so it's nice and tall. I make my helicopter and fold my arm in and then the bow is going to land on the road on its green dot. And I'm going to go from green to red for every single bow stroke. Ready, go now. Ready, go now. Ready, go now. So I've just let the bow sit on the string and I've given the bow to the string. I'm going to try to tap my first finger so you can see how light my fingers are on the bow. I'm not gripping the bow at all and I'm going to tap my pinky as well. How do we move across the strings? We call it string crossing. Well, I've just played Piccadilly Circus on the E string. The string next door to the E is called the A string. And to get there, I'm going to rock over like a rocking horse. And it's the back of my hand that is going to lead over. So rolls over. I think I'm on the A string. Let's hear it. Ready, go. Now, to get back to the E, my arm is going to come into my side and leads the bow hand. Boom. Let's hear the E. Ready? Go. Now the back of the hand leads over again. It rocks over like a rocking horse to the A string. Ready? Go. And now the arm comes down to my side. Boom. Ready? Go. Now I'm going to rock over to the A string one more time. The back of my hand leads over and I'm going to stay here and I'm going to play Piccadilly Circus with the CD on the A string. shake out my arms. My bow hold is going to turn into that butterfly and it's going to fly away and I'm just going to imagine my shoulders come up to my ears. This is the top, the penthouse. Now I'm going down to the basement and up to the penthouse and down to the basement. Now we're going to just do string crossing. So I'm going to play Piccadilly Circus on the E string and then rock over to the A string with the back of the hand leading and then arm down to the E string again. And I'm doing this with the CD, it's on track five. So the violin's in playing position. I've got my good bow hold, make my helicopter, land on the E string. Here we go. Ready, go now. Back of the hand, over. Arm, down. Back of the hand, over. Now at reading notes. When we see notation written, 
there's usually two things. There's a ball and there's a stick. The ball tends to tell us what the pitch of a note is and the stick tells us what the rhythm is. And all music is governed by a beat, just like your heartbeat, which is a regular occurrence. It doesn't get faster or slower, it just stays steady. So here are some sticks. In the first one, this one, we can see a single stick going down and I've put the heartbeat above it. So if I've got a click of a heartbeat that goes one, two, three, four, this rhythm says ta, 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 ta. Now you could walk that beat, one, two, and I'm gonna keep on walking it and say this rhythm, ready, go. Ta, 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 ta. If I've got two sticks barred together, I have what we call quavers. But we say TT for each one of these. So when we've got a TT note, we've got a heartbeat and two sounds. So here's my beat. And it will say TT, 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 TT. So I'll walk the beat and say that rhythm. TT, 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 TT. Now, I've gone and left two other ones underneath, and I want you to work those out for yourself. So you have this rhythm here and this rhythm here. I'll be the beat and you say what this rhythm says. Here's your beat and I'll give you four. One, two, three, four. I hope you got that right. Now we're going to number four. Here's your beat. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at is what the left hand does. Last week, we were looking at the engine driver going in his cabin, the train in the station, and then we were making this beautiful tabletop of that first finger and we were putting the first finger onto the stripe and then we were letting the bird fly away and then we were putting the bird down on the stripe again. Now we're going to look at the other fingers and we use a little rhyme for that. So here we go. The first one is the open E. It says, I'm a little monkey. Then Mr. One goes down on his stripe, as before. Climbing up the ladder. <laughs> then Mr. Two takes a big step over Mr. One's luggage, because Mr. One's brought so much luggage onto that train. So there's a gap, and Mr. Two is just behind the second stripe. Pick a ripe banana. And then Mr. Three gets in at the next stop and Mr. Two and Three are best friends. So they sit together with Mr. Three right beside Mr. Two. Eat it for my dinner. <laughs> at the next stop, Mr. Three gets off the train. And then the next stop, Mr. Two gets off the train. Then at the last stop, Mr. One gets off the train. And what I'm left with is the engine driver in his cabin, the train in the station, the mouse hole and the mouse escape route. At no point did my hand go like this. I kept that mouse hole and escape route all the way through. Let's try it one more time and then we're finished for today. So the first one is, I'm a little monkey. <coughs> Mr. One, climbing up the ladder. <coughs> Mr. Two, Pick a ripe banana, <laughs> Mr. Three, eat it for my dinner. <laughs> Mr. Three gets off, Mr. Two gets off, Mr. One gets off, and we're left with no fingers on the line anymore. Have a great week.